one to the Valley Water Meeting on the Country Flood Management Ventures Project. Uh, we had meeting number two here at Roosevelt Community Center. It's great to see uh, the turnout. Uh, we also have a uh, number of people joining us on Zoom. Uh, my name is Mike Potter. I'm in the office of the occasion to your MC tonight. Um, uh, the interpreters are in the back of the room. In Spanish and Vietnamese, please go ahead and introduce yourselves. You're joining on Zoom. You're looking for that section. Yeah, if anybody needs um, presentation, uh, you know, I can ask you to put it in the next one. And then you can send it on the back and give it to the next one. Thank you very much. For those of you watching on Zoom, we want to make sure that uh, you think of good questions. We'll be sure to answer and ask them uh, and get answers for you. Please use the QA function, not the chat, for, for putting questions in. That makes it uh, work much better. And uh, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce and bring forward our director for this area, uh, Director Barbara Keating. I kind of have to lower this because I'm about as slow as my kids. You probably can't project as well. Can you all hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so, welcome everyone joining us tonight. Whether you're here in person, we've got a large crowd actually. It's so not expected. Or on Zoom, we're really happy to have you participate in this meeting. I'm proud to serve as your district team representative from the Valley Water Board of Directors. And I'm currently the vice chair, and I'm a retired public works professional. So I love project meetings. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do because it's a great opportunity to hear directly from the community. Um, I don't see any elected officials from the city of San Jose, but I think we might have some San Jose staff here. Okay, great. Thank you for coming. And um, Reducing the risk of flooding along Coyote Creek is a high priority for both my board and colleagues and myself. So this project represents our commitment to supporting our community's public health and safety. I'm very excited to share that we are starting construction this summer on the first of the two Coyote Creek projects. And tonight, staff is going to be updating you on the areas and work you can expect to see. It's always better to know what's coming, right? And um, that makes it a little easier to, to deal with potential impacts of construction. And staff's also going to give you an update on the second project, the Coyote Creek Flood Protection Project. And you may remember that the second project contains flood protection elements at Oliver and William Street Parks. So during our past meetings, we actually received a lot of input from many neighbors on how best to integrate the flood risk reduction measures with the parks and the surrounding community. Obviously, any impacts to parks are sensitive and they do affect the community. So additionally, we continue to work with the um, property owners and, um, sorry, I thought I had a page there here. Um, we continue to work with property owners slated for elevation, acquisition, or property access on the best path forward for reducing the flood risk in the best way possible for their specific property, properties. So we've already purchased some properties, and if you have questions about the purchased properties, we have staff here who can answer those during the question and answer portion of our agenda. Um, we're going to provide updates during this construction phase and host another public meeting for the Coyote Creek Flood Protection Project in early 2024, and this will include the remaining sections of work to be done. Uh, finally, I have to do a shout out for on the water conservation side as we enter summer. We ask you to please conserve water and use water wisely. Uh, we ask that you join us and say yes to saving water. Visit watersavings.org for additional ways to save water. Take advantage of rebates or report water waste. 
Um, we also have some little giveaways here. So thank you again for participating tonight. We really do appreciate it. And we look forward to having you involved in every step of this project. Mike, back to you. Again, um, next I'd like to bring up uh, the project manager, Caitlin Dalvin, for her presentation about the project. Hey everyone, uh, welcome again to the pre-construction public meeting for the Coyote Creek Flood Management Measures Project. Again, I'm Caitlin Pack-Alpine, the project manager. So here is just a brief uh, meeting agenda and then I'll be going over. So I'll you know, give a project description, background, um, explain what you can expect during construction, as well as how to communicate with us during the construction period. So the Coyote Creek Flood Management Measures Project will be constructing flood walls along approximately four miles of Coyote Creek, and that extends from Old Oakland Road to Highway 280. Uh, the primary objective is, along with the Coyote Creek Flood Protection Project um, is to help protect against uh, flood events such as that that happened in February of 2017. And so I, I did mention that two projects help reach uh, our objective. And so uh, the Kiting Creek Flood Management Measures Project is tied to the Anderson Dam um, work. And um, in February of 2020, uh, the Federal, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC, issued an order to implement risk reduction measures at Anderson Dam. And so as a result, uh, Valley Water developed what we call the uh, FERC Order Compliance Project. Um, and you can see a list of the projects on the screen. So that does include the Anderson Dam Tunnel Project, as well as the Coyote Creek Flood Management Measures Project. So Anderson Dam Tunnel will allow for more water to enter Coyote Creek, and that's why we've had to expedite the Flood Management Measures Project um, uh, in uh, tandem with the Anderson Dam Tunnel Project. And then one important uh, item to note is that the Flood Management Measures Project will need to be implemented and completed by the time the Anderson Dam Tunnel is operational. And so here's just an overview um, of the reaches of the Coyote Creek project. Um, in the kind of lime green um, color, you can see the extent of the flood management measures project, which extends for all of reach five, as well as portions of reach six and seven. And then again, that extends from Old Oakland Road to Highway 280. And here's a Reach 5 specific map. Um, you can see uh, on the screen we have a construction staging area to the north. Uh, up here, um, which is you know off of Quarry Court and Old Oakland Road. And then we have um, some flood walls along the West Bank here. And uh, those flood walls range from approximately six to 12 and a half feet um, high. And then we also have um, kind of a shorter segment of flood wall off of Notting Hill on the east side of the bank, um, which is a maximum of three feet high. Uh, and then here's a map of reach six. Um, and this just shows the flood wall that's part of the flood management measures project, um, which is again on the west bank, you see here. And then we also have a small construction stage staging area at uh, Watson Park, which will be kind of to the north of the dog park area. And so the flood wall here is approximately on average six feet high. 
And then here's an overview of reach seven and the, uh, the features um, for the flood management measures project. Um, as uh, Director Kelly mentioned, we've acquired a number of properties um, off of 17th Street as well as the Royal Way. And so we will have um, some of the properties on the 17th that are going to be demoed, which is 40, 50, and 60 South 17th Street, as well as the garage structure to the north of there. And then we'll have the flood walls um, wrap around the homes off of 17th and Arroyo. Um, and they will tie into kind of the street level um, and then be uh, approximately 10 feet tall on average and with a maximum as um, so the for on the screen is that something you can adjust. No, yeah, it's the projector. You're fuzzy. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's going well. And then uh, there's another flood wall around the entirety of our great classroom, um, which is behind the home on 16th uh, and uh, William Street. And so on average, that flood wall height will be approximately 10 feet. And then there will be another flood wall off of um, 16th and Margaret, just uh, surrounding the homes to the south of William Street Park um, with an average height of approximately four feet. Um, and that will also kind of tie into the high ground um, adjacent to the street level um, down at this point here. <laughs> And here we have some examples of what uh, sheet pile flood walls would look like um, post construction. Uh, on the left here is actually uh, a picture of the um, Rock Springs Park flood wall. Um, that one currently is a vinyl sheet pile, but what we'll be installing is a steel sheet pile. Um, but you can kind of see the uh, top has like what we call a cap around it. Um, that is uh, not a concrete cap, but will be a more like vinyl uh, type material. Um, and then we also have a rendering on the right, just kind of showing the zigzag shape of what the sheet pile will look like. Um, and then in some locations, there will be you know, a concrete aesthetic uh, or architectural facing. Um, and I've just shown a couple of just options of what that could look like um, where the facing is gonna be located. I also have an example right here. <laughs> this year is kind of just an example of what the uh, of what the sheet pile shape is going to look like. So feel free to come um, and take a look. Um, you can see that zigzag zigzag type shape um, of the sheet pile. My example is just plastic, so I can carry it around with me. <laughs> and then here is um, kind of our anticipated uh, schedule. Um, as you can see, we have uh, June 2023 to October of 2024 for construction of the flood management measures project. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, the completion of the flood management measures project is tied to the uh, Anderson Dam Tunnel be operational. So what can you expect during construction? Um, we're gonna have designated work zones for just for also public safety as well as work crew safety. Um, you can expect to see large heavy equipment as well as hauling trucks, moving materials, machine pile, for example. Uh, we are expecting weekday work from eight to five. Um, and if there's a potential for work on the weekend, but we would reach back out to you uh, and let you know that changes. Uh, you can also expect uh, traffic control on public roadways. Um, and so you may see more trucks uh, moving throughout or cones um, and sign uh, within the neighborhood where we'll be delivering materials. There's also gonna be some construction noise and dust. Um, and then on the right here, I have a picture of the Beacon Tyler type of equipment, um, which is what we'll be using to install 
uh, the sheet pile flood wall. And so one of the benefits of this type of equipment is that um, it really minimizes the vibration during construction. And then we'll also have some tree and vegetation prep work or removal and preparation for the flood wall installation. And then again, duration of construction, we're expecting from June of 2023 until October of 2024. So neighborhood communication, uh, your main points of contact will be both myself and Jose. Um, I have our contact information on the next slide, um, but we'll also be providing, you know, project updates, um, you know, in regular direct mail, email, signed up on our website, as well as next door. Posts. You'll also see project signs with the kind of QR code on them that you can get access to the project website. And then uh, in early 2024, we'll be giving kind of an update on the second phase of the project, which is the Coyote Creek Flood Protection Project. So here is our contact information, as well as our uh, project website, and then the Access Valley Water site, where you can submit um, uh, questions and concerns online to the Access Valley Water site. Um, but again, uh, Jose and I are your, you know, kind of contact. So please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. And that kind of concludes my presentation. Um, now I'm kind of going to sure question and answer. And here's just another example of the QR code on the screen here. We're happy to. Yeah. Take your questions, and we will also uh, look forward to hearing from the folks on Zoom that will tell us uh, what their questions are, but I'll come out to you. Can you clarify, can you clarify sheet pile for us? Sure. Sheet pile is kind of just a, a type of material that we'll be using to, uh, that will be essentially the flood wall. So this is kind of just a short segment of an example. We'll have Pretty uh, long sections that will be pushing into the ground. Go back to the picture. Or be it steel, right? Or really thick steel. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of the zigzag shape of steel um, that's going to comprise of the, uh, the flood wall. And it'll stick straight into the ground. It'll be embedded pretty deep. Um, and then uh, you'll see the above from. Here's just a short example you can see here. Um, so that very tall piece that gets pushed into the ground. Okay, is that the whole? So yeah, so that would be a regular part of the of the uh, wall. Uh, yeah. You mentioned uh, two types of finishes. For the, oh, sorry. Uh, you mentioned two types of finishes for the wall. How does that work for the homeowner that you're working with or the business? Yeah, so uh, well, in some locations, we'll have a uh, concrete facing on the wall, and then the homeowners um, will get to choose which um, facing will be in their backyard. Um, and so that'll essentially, it's like a big stamp that you stamp onto the concrete, um, and then it'll take that shape. Okay, another question right here. Uh, yeah, hi, my name is Sean Murray White. Um, Last time we met, uh, we were talking about different options around the park, and uh, I know that we decided, I think we settled on the walls that will flip up as if there's ever, yeah, the big massive barriers. And, but I also know that there, that causes a cost overrun, I think, or I mean, I've heard that there might be like a seven, $70 million overrun or something. How is that playing to this? Is that impacting any of the choices we made? So uh, yeah, we uh, there will be passive barriers around the William Street Park, um, and also at Selma Olander Park, and then at the entrance of uh, Watson Park across Jackson Street. And so um, that those are all part of um, the flood protection project. Um, and so there has been some cost increases that we have, um, you know, adjusted our budget for in the future. Um, and so. Uh, the features haven't changed from our last update. Uh, here you can kind of see on the map um, the 
passage barriers here around William Street and then also at Selma Olander. Um, and so uh, those are still being implemented as part of the flood protection project. Great. And we'll, that will be a subject of a upcoming meeting in 2024. In early 2024, yes. There's another question. I'm Jonathan Carp. Uh, given that it's the middle of June 23, do you anticipate starting construction in the latter part of this month? In the latter part of this month, yes. Yeah. Great. Great. And we've got one in the back here. Any other questions in the room? Shot. Do we have any questions from our Zoom audience? At this time, we don't see any. There's another one. One moment. Uh, the, um, these slides, will we get a copy of this packet that you're showing us? And particularly, I want to make sure that we all have that information in the contact. Yeah, so um, actually the slides are already posted on our project website. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Those were posted this morning, and uh, the samples are also in the room. For those that are on Zoom, don't see it. We have larger printouts of a lot of the uh, schematics, and there's a flyer that also has Jose's contact. Jose, everybody knows how you get a hold of Jose. He's the community liaison. The, the... Map, you see, they're all on the website individually as well. For you, the, the maps are also on the website, so you can download those uh, and, and blow them up if you like. Yeah. Um, and then, so here's our contact information again. And I have business cards on the desk over here. Um, and Jose's contact and my contact is both listed on our project website as well. Hey, there's a question in the room. Hey, Aaron, you also put on your website. Um, Caitlin, did you post on your website a little video that shows how the machine actually works? Because that was very beneficial for us to watch. How it moves along, mm -hmm. pushes it. I didn't sure. post a video, but I, I think that we might have some. There's a little clip that we that we got. So yeah, it's very important. Yeah. It's a sample of the construction process used to install those, and it is. Uh, Everyone likes watching the construction videos. It, it wasn't like a real but it was a bit of photos. Yeah, how animated. It, how it moved. <laughs> yeah, I, I can yeah, I explain it a little bit, but I think actually on uh, the Valley Water um, Instagram, they posted a, a short video on the Hale Creek um, project, which is actually a picture of, um, and uh, it shows that how it was working as well. Um, and then, uh, but so how the machine works is um, it basically, you can see here, it sits on top of the wall um, and then it's going to uh, push that piece in. Yeah, this piece uh, pushes, um, it'll it push it in. And then, it's not a pile driver in the sense that it slams it in and kind of right. shoves it in. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it Pushes this piece down and then it kind of essentially it uses hydraulics and pulls this piece up um, so that it's not like a hammer in that sense. Um, it's much more gentle and uh, doesn't have as much vibration um, as a typical. If you've ever seen a, a hammer or vibration um, method of installing sheet pile, it's, it's much more um, gentle. Very similar to you being a shovel. Getting the shovel and just pressing it into the ground. That's how it works. And just push it into the ground. There's no vibrations. There's no slamming. There's nothing. It just slowly goes into the ground. Okay. We've got one question on Zoom now. Why don't we go to that? Uh, Matt Wilson here, Public Information Representative of Valley Water. This question is from an anonymous attendee. Residents who were contacted by the water district and agreed to an easement area, when will the water district move forward with finalizing the easement with the county assessor's office and paying out the proposed acquisition offer? Um, so that's gonna be dependent on each individual property owner. Um, so we might be at different stages along that process um, of getting 
uh, that documentation uh, reported with the county office. Um, Got a question in the back. Okay. Um, what happens when uh, you're saying that it just goes in gently into the ground? But there are circumstances where it doesn't go so gently into the ground and where you run into some kind of obstruction. So then how do you get it down further? That's a great question. Um, so uh, and it's true, there are instances, you know, what will come across possibly an obstruction. Um, it kind of depends on the depth. We might need to do some excavation. Um, but there's also kind of an attachment that we have available that will kind of uh, drill into the ground to help break up that obstruction so that we can continue pushing the sheet pile in. Uh, the, the other thing that you mentioned was that the flood walls were, Water District decided to put in the flood walls because the new tunnel coming out of Anderson is supposed to allow a lot more water to come out than the so you mean, in other words, considering you're you're thinking that there's so much water that's going to be let out at the end one time that it could come as high as what it did when it flooded in 2017. So um, the driver of the projects, both the flood management measures project and flood protection project, is to um, check up to that level from February of 2017. So both of them combined, but the elements for flood management measures had to be expedited because some of because of the water um, from Anderson Dam uh, could impact some of the lower levels uh, where those features are. So it might not be the entire height um, because both projects together reach that design um, water surface elevation height, um, but some of the pro some of the features for flood management measures are at more lower lying areas um, so that some of those areas are lower than uh, both what would be needed for the flood protection project. Okay, but where we live, we never flooded in this Anderson over the flood of the wall. So, um, and the whole point that I thought to begin with was when the tunnel, when the, the new tunnel is going to be put in, that now we basically take care of the flooding problem downstream because they would be able to control the flow of the water. They'd be able to let water out faster than what they had let it out before. And that was supposed to kind of, that was supposed to take care of the problem of the flooding downstream. When did it change to uh, putting in flood walls instead of basically curing the problem that Anderson ran? Um, I'm not quite sure that it did change, but so uh, because, you know, it, 2017 event is kind of what the full objective of the project is. Um, and so that has a certain kind of design flow. Um, and then, yes, the tunnel at Anderson is going to allow for more water um, to you know, flow into the creek, and that's kind of to bring the, the uh, reservoir down at Anderson um, faster than it, what it could have done um, previously. You have other questions on Zoom? Okay. Yep. Good evening, Ms. Sunshine. Um, uh, will there be funds to make sure that we just not fill up the contents of garbage as we go forward? So, the other problem in 2017 was how full the creek was and things that didn't come. Yeah, um, so I can start off. Um, I'm not sure if uh, others would want to add, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have, you know, um, we're getting the easements um, for the project. And so then now we will have property rights um, to help uh, maintain and keep, you know, the flood walls um, working to being able to perform the way they need to. Um, and so part of it is that, um, you know, previously, Valley Water didn't have a lot of. Uh, property rights along Coyote Creek. Now that's part of um, you know acquiring the rights to do this project and then perform the maintenance um, after the flood walls have been installed. Any questions? Any other questions in the room? Good. 
Um, I keep forgetting that this whole project to address the 2017 conditions is split up into two, and this is about one of the two phases. And can you explain the difference between, so we have, we're talking about flood walls today, and I asked a question about the, you know, the passive barriers of the park, and that's a different project. Can you explain, like, the link between the two, how do we think about it, what are they called, and why are they separate? Sure. So, <laughs> Uh, the Coyote Creek Flood Protection Project is kind of what we started with actually um, after 2017. So that's when we kind of kickstarted the planning um, phase. And then what really kind of triggered um, the split of the two projects is the, uh, the FERC order that we received um, in February 2020. You can kind of see that in the project duration here. That kind of um, separated where, you know, in response to that FERC order, Valley Water identified certain elements at lower line levels along the creek um, for us to expedite as part of the flood management measures project. So the flood management measures project is, um, is that portion that we expedited to be completed in time with the Anderson Dam Tunnel Project. And that's part of kind of that FERC order compliance project, which, you know, includes Anderson Dam Channel flood management measures and a couple of other projects associated with Anderson Dam. Um, and then also at the same time, we're um, you know, moving forward with the flood protection project, um, which you know, are kind of higher levels along the creek. Um, and uh, uh, but both of them combined is what reaches our goal um, to help uh, protect against the February 2017 event. And for those of you at home. FERC stands for Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and they ordered Anderson Dam to be drained to keep the outlet completely open so that it would not retain water um, because it's not safe. So the projects impacted by that are emergency measures. And so that's partly why the split happened as well, right? Those have to happen first. The other ones, there's more review. And, and the EIR process for the uh, dam renovation. Is that right? Pretty uh, close. Yeah. So for the flood protection project, you know, we're continuing through design, and we'll have it'll have its own permitting and um, CEQA documentation associated with it. Where uh, and the flood management measures was tied to that emergency project and had kind of an expedited timeline. But both of them together are what's needed to help. Um, reach our goal of that February 2017 event. And, and this has to be done before the tunnels. Yeah. 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 Great. Another question? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so just to clarify, if there was a massive rainstorm, say in uh, middle of you know 2026, the so the management areas are protected. If the houses along 16th by William Street Park would not be because the second project would not be completely no. park. Yeah, so so the um, but uh you'll see in the picture the, the uh, lime green is what's part of the flood management measures mm -hmm. project the first phase and then the purple is what's part of the flood protection project. Right. Um, So the, the, the idea of the second phase along William Street Park and 16th Street is to keep the water in the park mm -hmm. and to not have it come out. Last time the water went beyond the edge of the park into the street and right. it hit some homes. Yes. Yeah. Right. So my point was that because that part will not be completed by the time the tunnel is built, then if there was a got it. So you're saying that since that won't be done, the, the second part won't be done when the tunnel is built. Um but It'll, the lower part is in the is, is impacted by the flood walls. Right, but, right. But I'm saying that's the lower part, but not the higher part yet. Yeah. The higher part will not be protected until the second phase of the that's right. Yeah, right. So we wouldn't reach our goal um, until all the projects are done right. with yeah. uh, construction. The, this is just repeating, I think, earlier questions, but all of this, so with a lot of rain, the tunnel itself will let enough water out that it will be comparable to the, to the 2017 flood. No. No? No. No? Then why are we doing this? 
So, but that level uh, would impact some areas along the creek, and that's the, the parts that we've identified for the flood management measures project, but it would not be as high as 2017. Ever? ever? From just the flood, from just Anderson Dam Tunnel, no. Um, Just to put in perspective, um, this year, Anderson in December was at dead pool, zero capacity. After the rains, it was at, after April, January, February, and March, it was near 54%. And the outlet's been open the whole time. So it would have been a lot of fun. So that the, the be able to control its level by having a larger outlet is, is highlighted by that situation. We have a question isn't, isn't the reason the Anderson build up so fast is because coyote spilling and it was spilling up straight and filling up that was made of faster? Uh, back in 2017? No, I mean, this past year. Oh, we're talking about how high the water got and that Anderson was basically empty and it, it flowed it, it filled up to a certain point. It's part of the reason it built up at that point was because payout is upstream from there and they just spill it the whole time. You know, once it reached capacity. So, I mean, obviously that has something to do with Anderson filling up besides just the amount of rain. You know. I'm not familiar. I'm not sure that maybe. Did you familiar? We're calling an expert here. Have you thought of Question. Oh, yeah. Uh, is there enough for Anderson water because of coyote overspill? It is different factors, a bunch of factors. It's not just coyote overspilling, some water of rain, the size of the water, and it's some like, fact that coyote overspill is a combination of factors that apply the water to Anderson. But just to reiterate this point, the Anderson water has been a few days ago. It's true. Any other questions in the room? I wanted to make sure to acknowledge uh, Diego Martinez, who's here from the Oak Grove School District, and also on behalf of Council Member Omar Torres. Any other questions? We have one on Zoom. Matt, take it away. Matt, take it away. All right, this is from an anonymous attendee. Are there plans to store any of the water from the dam instead of releasing it only? Uh, currently, no. Um, right now, to be in compliance with the, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, the FERC order, um, it is to keep the reservoir at dead pool. So uh, we need to keep it at essentially zero capacity. It goes yeah. We have a Another expert thing is Thank you. Uh, I just got a pick by Jennifer Kovian for who's our operations deputy there. Uh, I am Bhavani Airport. I'm in the role of the acting assistant uh, chief executive officer of Valley Water. Uh, a couple of clarifying points. Um, the, the water that uh, the question about storing the water, while we release the water down to the Coyote Creek, it actually is going down into our groundwater system through the percolation pumps. So uh, but uh, storing in, in the reservoir itself is not uh, allowed right now because of the federal order. We have to keep the Anderson Reservoir completely drained with no water storage. Um, there was another point uh, that I think Madhu tried to clarify about uh, the flooding, uh, what caused the flooding and the, uh, and the connection between the first and the second project. Um, in order to keep the water at that level, we need a larger outlet than we had back in 2017. And that is the driver for building the first project ahead of time. So in other words, as rains fill up the reservoir, we'd be letting a lot more water come out through that reservoir. So the current reservoir outlet is only 500 CFS. The new Anderson Tunnel uh, Reservoir is about 2,200. Is that right? The Anderson Tunnel capacity new one. 2,000 CFS. So it's four times larger. So four times more flow would come out of there 
which is the genesis or the basis for why we need to build this project before that company is complete. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Any other questions in the room? Matt, are there any on Zoom? Well, we will remain here uh, available to answer those questions that you may have that uh, you don't want to ask in front of the whole crowd. And we have pizza and water and uh, the sample boards from this presentation are uh, available for you to look up more closely. Um, I'll come back on camera here and thank you to everyone for uh, being here. And uh, again, all of this information and materials will be posted on our website. Uh, and if you think of something after this meeting, you can contact Caitlin or Jose at the contact information that we provided. And we will see you again uh, soon at the Coyote Creek Flood Protection Project meeting in early 2024. Thank you.